Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan, Dan, the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 67, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I was surprised by how well written this book was. I shouldn't be, as White is the other half of the famous writing book The Elements of Style, but it still struck me just how good the writing is in this book. The prose was clear and perfectly organized. The story moves well and has a great flow, and you could say there are many pieces of poetry sprinkled in, because of how beautiful the writing is at times. Look, for example, at this beautiful line of Charlotte speaking to Wilbur at the fair, the night before he may become a prize pig. And if you're not familiar, Charlotte is a spider, and she writes things in her web to make people not want to kill Wilbur and eat him, as they do with most pigs, so that he can stay alive. So. For example, this beautiful line of Charlotte speaking to Wilbur at the fair the night before he may become a prize pig. When the first light comes into the sky, and the sparrow stirs, and the cows rattle their chains, when the rooster crows and the stars fade, when early cars whisper along the highway, you look up here, and I'll show you something. Whew! Gave me some goosebumps. It's descriptive and wonderful. I knew and loved this story from watching the animated movie hundreds of times, well, probably dozens of times as a kid, but never had read the book. I started reading it because I wanted a good book to read to my young kids. They loved this book, especially my oldest, who is seven. Wow. Now my oldest is nine, and he's in the sixth Harry Potter book. As soon as I read through ahead of him so that I know it's not too scary for him to read. Now back to that review. He never wants me to stop and will sit and listen for long periods of time. If you're reading this book, it's really fun to do different voices for the different characters and animals. Like the Rat Templeton or the crazy goose who repeats syllables all the time. It's a very fun book to read to your kids that will last many reading sessions, as it's a nice lengthy chapter book for kids. For a children's story, this book does a tremendous job of touching on some big themes and subjects. The main one, of course, is death. Wilbur is a pig, and all spring pigs become bacon and sausage. Mmm. Oh, sorry. This story happens because the spider, Charlotte, attempts to save Wilbur's life. The characters in this story are richly rendered. From Fern's rambunctious brother Avery, always stirring up trouble and toting around some poor frog, to the loving Fern who saves the pig Wilbur's life in the first chapter. And here's another quote from the book. Fern was up at daylight, trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, She now has a pig, a small one, to be sure, but nevertheless, a pig. It just shows what can happen if a person gets out of bed promptly. I don't want to put spoilers into this review, but let's just say for such a fun, delightful little book where animals talk, this story tackles death in a beautiful way, and the subject comes up again and again, and not just for the pig character Wilbur. This was a gorgeous story, beautifully written, and I'm very glad I read it and am reading it to my kids. I haven't finished reading it to them yet, but I wanted to finish it before the year was over because I'm trying to see how many books I can read this year. So I did finish it. Before writing this review, of course. Alright, now back to the review. This little book easily stands as one of the best books I read this year. Though this slim volume was written for kids, it touched my heart, and even brought tears to my eyes twice. 
It truly is a treasure and a masterpiece. Awesome. Well, I have some really cool and exciting news for you guys, the listeners of this podcast. Because you can get Charlotte's Web as an audiobook for free. The other cool thing is, Audible has it read by the author and someone named George Plimpton. So, if you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews, you can get a free 30-day trial of their service and a free audiobook. Now, they pretty much have them all, and you can get any audiobook of your choice. But this week I'm recommending Charlotte's Web, written by E.B. White and narrated by the author. It's three and a half hours long. Like I said, it's a short book, but it's a great one. And it might be, you might like it as much as I did and want to listen to it like once a year, since you could probably fit it in in a day or two, or at least within a few days. So check it out, Charlotte's Web. The I have listened to the narration, and when an author is capable of narrating well, then you want to have the author narrating their own story because it's their own words, so they're familiar to them, and it just comes out so well. I actually narrate other people's audiobooks sometimes, and I can tell you it's a whole lot easier. Unless they're a really good writer, then it's easy to narrate. But if the writing is just kind of okay, um, reading your own writing is just much easier, as I do when I read these book reviews that I wrote. So anyway, check it out, and thank you to Audible for sponsoring this podcast, and if you go and get a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash dansbookreviews, then you are helping support the show in a financial way. So thanks to Audible, and thank you. Now, let's get back to that review. Awesome. Well, that was a pretty long review. I don't have much to add to it other than to just say if you have kids or if you're a kid at heart or if you just like great literature, you owe it to yourself to read this classic, Charlotte's Web. I'm telling you, there's a whole lot more to offer than I'm guessing that you're thinking there is because if you're like me, I watched the cartoon a ton of times and I really liked There's a scene in the original 2D animated Charlotte's Web movie where they sing a song, a barbershop quartet sings a song, Zuckerman's Famous Pig, and I loved that song. (laughs) I also just loved the story. (laughs) As I'm thinking back on it, one of my favorite meals has always been breakfast, and in that movie, I think you get to see them eat pancakes and Well, probably not bacon, but I don't know. It just always made me crave big, hearty pancake breakfast like these farmers ate. But I was really surprised that just how good the writing was, how great the story was. And like I said, if you're reading it to your kids, it was a blast doing different voices for the different characters. The rat, the the goose that repeats words is hilarious or... I guess repeat syllables, so just one word will be the say, say, same, same, like that syllable over and over again, but in a really fun and poetic way. There's just a great timing to E.B. White's writing. I mean, he really was a master of writing the English language, and his prose was fantastic. You know, I should really check out what other books he's read, because he is a tremendously talented writer. But I highly recommend it. Check it out, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. And you can get the audiobook for free, narrated by the author, at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Something else you can get for free is my brand new short story. I wrote a story called Stiff-Legged Bear, and it's about a huge Native American mythological creature that goes by that name and many others. He's the size of an elephant, but he's a bear, a man-eating bear. And my character lost his brother to something. He doesn't know what, 
but his brother was always searching for this bear in this forest where he had heard people had sighted the bear. And then one day his brother just never came home from camping in that forest. So every day on the anniversary of his brother's death, or the day that he went missing anyways, because they're not sure what happened to him, he goes and camps out in that forest because his brother's empty grave brings him no comfort. But going to the forest that his brother loved and spent so much time in makes him feel close to his brother. So he does that and happens to, this is not really a spoiler, it happens right at the beginning of the story, happens to come upon a gigantic bear print in the dirt. So he calls his hunting buddy who he knows has hunted and killed bears and asks him to come help him track this thing down. The rest of the story is pretty exciting and I will not get into spoilers there but let's just say it's a pretty eventful adventure story hunting a mythological bear monster through a forest. What happens next, you'll just have to read to find out. Now you can go and support me by buying it at Amazon.com for your Kindle or Smashwords.com for any device that you want. Uh, you can find it at BarnesandNoble.com, pretty much all the online ebook retailers for 99 cents. Or if you want to read it for free, you can go to wattpad.com. That's W-A-T-T-P-A-D dot com. Just search stiff-legged bear, and that's S-T-I-F-F-L-E-G-G-E-D bear. And you'll find my new story, and the cover, by the way, is awesome. I love the cover. So check it out, stiff-legged bear, for free at Wattpad, or only 99 cents anywhere else, and no matter where you read it, if you could leave me a review on Amazon, I would really appreciate it. That is another way that you could help support me as a writer. Alright, so as a book reviewer, I'm asking you to go review my story. It's a short story, so you can read it quickly. But you're going to love it. It's really exciting and fun. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope you have a great... Uh, week of reading. I hope that you are getting through your stack of books for your summer reading list. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Dan Dan the Art Man. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.